Hello and now welcome to this video on how to make this procedural knitted style shader inside of Blender and this is a pretty cool shader because it allows you to make sort of things that you can't really do with image textures like for example have these custom uh, pattern effects which you can sort of control the frequency of and you could control anything about the look of these as well and there's also this uh, these random effects you can have layered on top of this but um, yeah overall uh, it's a pretty cool shader and I wanted to show you how I used it um, but first of all let's have a look at it on uh, on an actual character here you can see I've got a character model and you, all you have to make sure is that you give this thing enough subdivisions so that it renders properly but if I have a look at how this works you can see it's sort of uh, it, look, it works pretty well it follows the UV map basically perfectly and um, you know you get that, that infinite sort of procedural detail when it comes to the bump on this so it's a pretty useful shader and you can also do some clever thing, things with uh, using masks to sort of drive the colors of each individual stitch um, which is what I've been trying to do here on this Fox model. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and start taking a look at how to make this in a fresh file. So I'm going to set up my Blender file to render in cycles, first of all. And the reason for this is that it's just a bit quicker to work on shaders inside of cycles, even if they work both in cycles and DV, um, because it doesn't have to recompile anything. Then I'm going to go into rendered mode and turn off scene world so I get the HDR on. And under my material, I'm going to add a new material. And let's go ahead and in settings, turn this from displacement bump only to displacement and bump. And that will allow us to physically move the actual geometry with the shader. So we don't have any geometry on this right now. It's just four corners. So let's add in a subdivision surface modifier and set it to simple so we don't want to smooth anything out. And I'm going to give it a lot of subdivisions, something like six because we're gonna need a lot of subdivisions to be able to you know, make these individual stitches on this. So now let's open up a shader, uh, shader editor hit over here and go into top view in the viewport. Now let's go ahead and uh, start out with our UV map. And the way I like to work with procedural shaders is to work directly on the coordinates. And I, I rarely use textures really, only to introduce some randomness. So I'm gonna explain the principle of what we're gonna be making here. First of all, we're gonna be uh, scaling the UV map by some amount. And then the main uh, key part of this is using the fraction node to separate it back out again. And this is a really useful way to get lots of different individual UV tiles that we can then work on sort of individually. But um, an analogy for this would be to describe how the fraction node works and um, by using just the one dimensional version of it. So if I have just a straight value here and I plug in uh, some, some number into it, uh, you can see that as the value approaches a multiple of one, uh, it gets reset back to zero. So you can imagine on the graph, it would be, uh, we start at zero, we go to one, and then we get reset back to zero, go up again like that. So we create this sort of like spiky pattern. But when we do this in two dimensions, we get uh, squares basically. So that's what this fraction node's doing. And the key part of this is gonna be essentially just offsetting every other square upwards uh, on a sort of gradient-like fashion. So we get this kind of um, pattern, this sort of stitched pattern. And now the first thing I want to do is make sure that these aren't squares, but rectangles. So I don't wanna scale it by just one value. Let's scale it by a ratio. So like something like one to two. And um, this will have my stitches going the, the wrong way though. So I'm gonna use two to one. So they go like that. And then I could go ahead and scale this. And I can get uh, any number of stitches I want here. So this would be a nice input for your node group as well. Um, another way to do this would be to actually have the value inside of this scale node and just multiply it in like that. And this gives you the exact same result. And this is a bit cleaner for me because we, we're gonna need this uh, ratio later on. So uh, this, this, this is gonna be fairly important um, for getting our pattern to work. So this is our ratio. And now if I add in a vector math add node in between the fraction and the multiply, if I start playing with the values on this, you can see I can sort of slide the stitches around. And if I slide the Y, you can see that's sort of interesting because if I could do this non-uniformly, but you know with a gradient, we could offset the stitches to make that kind of pattern we're after. So what I'm going to do is use the gradient of the UV map. So let's separate this out and let's use the X gradient because this is going in the same direction as those stitches. And essentially what I'm going to do is um, sort of do the same thing we did with the fractions. So I could, for example, multiply this and fraction it. Um, so if I multiply this by seven and then do a fraction, 
can see we get that sort of hard line where it resets back to zero. And this is interesting, we could potentially use this, but I want to make this into something a bit more um, uh, sort of triangular rather than, you know, this sort of hard cutoff that we get. So we go from uh, zero to one, then we get a hard cutoff. I want it to instead be something like that. And in order to do that, I'm going to not use a fraction operation, but use a ping pong. And you can see now we get a much smoother gradient. It's, it's actually linear, but uh, it just, when it reaches basically one, it goes back down to zero instead of just cutting straight back to zero. Um, but the problem with this is that I can't control this value precisely enough to, you know, always work, always line up with the, the stitching pattern that we have. Like I'd have to line this gradient up perfectly by hand with the where the stitches are, which isn't very feasible or procedural. So uh, instead, what I'm going to do is use this ratio to control that. So if I separate this out, because I, I only care about the one direction at the minute, I only care about how many there are going to be in a particular axis. So it's going to be uh, the x-axis, I think. Uh, oh, it, it actually might be the y. I'm not sure. Let's try both. Um, but we're going to have to divide this. We're going to have to do one over this value. So uh, that will sort of give us the length of an individual stitch. And then if I plug that into the ping pong, you can see we get this now, this pattern, which is um, perfect because if we look at our stitching pattern, you can sort of see the similarities between this. We start at zero and then at the, the end of the first stitch, it goes to one. At the end of the second, it goes back to zero. So we're going to be adding and then taking away like that. So let's combine this into the Y of our add value. And you can see that we're kind of doing what we want to do here. And um, so if I multiply this value, you can see that we're actually getting the stitching pattern we want. And you could, you know, just multiply this by some value, but to, the proper way to do this would be to divide by this uh, value that we ping-ponged by, because this ping-pong is going to that value, um, which is going to be something like 0.1. And if we divide 0.1 by 0.1, um, we'll get 1. So we'll go back to 1 there. And then we get this perfect offset. And you could add in a multiply after this to control the sort of stretching of the stitches. If you set it to 0, you just get a grid. So let's go to like 0.5. And this is uh, pretty much most of the hard work done now. Um, I just want to show you a couple more things. So I want to show you how to randomly offset this as well as just, you know, with this procedural pattern. So the same way, we're just going to add something to the Y again. Um, but this time what we're going to add is add some random value. So instead of these, you know, repeating stripes can be random. So let's separate out. Uh, actually, no, let's not. Let's uh, snap this value. Because remember, at this point, we haven't fractioned this yet, so we've still got a lot of values going on here. I'm going to snap it to 1 on the x and the y. You can see we get this. And I only care about the 1 dimension for this. So I'm going to look at the x. And if you don't know what the snap node does, basically um, any fractional value will get sort of snapped to the nearest increment. So uh, where we have a value of like 0.5 in here, it gets snapped to 0. 1.5 will get snapped to 1, and then uh, we go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, so we go to this increment basically. We could do any increment we want, but I'm going to use 1 because that's what the fraction will use. Now we want to randomize this so it's not just a constant offset. And to do that, uh, we can take a white noise texture, plug this in, and this will output for any you know unique input a random output. So uh, we get this sort of random pattern here. If I put that into the Y again, Look at the fraction, we've randomly offset stuff. It might be too much though, so we can use a math node and multiply this down a bit. Maybe 0.2 is a good value, and you could always add that as an input as well. So now just to summarize where we're at, we've got our constant offset here, or our, uh, you know, our, our pattern offset. And then we've got our random offset over here. And then we're just fractioning it at the very end. But we can also use the snap node again, um, you know, on top of this fraction as a, as a different output. And this will allow us to do the pattern stuff with the color in the shaders. So we can either white noise this to get a random, you know, color per stitch, or we could, you know, use a modulo on this to get a random pattern. Well, not a random, a repeating pattern uh, on this texture. So if I separate the XYZ, I can modulo this by like two, and we can now get a pattern like that that I can use to color this. 
and you could combine anything from the x and the y. So you could do, say, a, a pattern on the x and the y, and then multiply them together to get this kind of a pattern. But let's uh, put that to one side for now. Uh, we don't really need it right now. I want to focus on the displacement of this. So uh, in order to convert this into a displacement map, I want to basically make a gradient that starts from the center of each stitch and goes to the edges. And the easiest way to do this is to first of all center our coordinates. So I'm going to subtract 0.5 from these in both directions, uh, like so. And you can think of this now as if we're working on an individual UV map. So, you know, the fact that we've got this stitching pattern is kind of irrelevant because it's just sort of being copied across the whole thing. And then from there, let's use an absolute node to get rid of all the negative values. So we have this kind of weird looking thing now. But if we separate out the XYZ, we have these two lines and we can combine these using a math node set to a smooth maximum. And if I plug the x and the y in here and set the distance to 1, uh, you can see we've kind of got this gradient that we wanted. So it starts at 0 in the center and goes out to 1, and this smoothness sort of controls that, that fall off we get. Now we just want to essentially uh, remap this a little bit. So I'm going to use a color ramp node, and I'm just going to pull in the white a little bit. And then let's use a float curve. And I'm going to invert it straight first off and you'll see this will give us something that looks pretty nice, sort of like a stitch already. Uh, but to properly preview how this is going to look in 3D, I'm going to use a displacement node and plug this into the heights and then set the mid level to zero because our black is the minimum point of this and plug that into the displacement. And you can see we've moved the geometry by this texture. Uh, obviously way too much, so let's turn the scale to 0.05 or something like that. We could go a bit more for now. Um, and you'll see that we have this linear fall off. We sort of go up to a peak and go back down. And uh, we want it to be a bit more smooth. So I'm going to add another point in this float curve and just drag it up towards the top right. And now we've smoothed that out a whole bunch. And in order to make this look, look a bit better as well, I'm going to right click shade smooth and that will help when we plug in our shader. So let's go ahead and see this with our principle plugged in and maybe give it a bit more geometry. You have to actually click the um, the levels and type in the number when you go above five. So just remember that. And I think we're still displacing this too much. So let's maybe half it again, 0.05. And that's looking pretty good now. So let's think about uh, coloring this now with our pattern setup here. So let's use this in the mix factor of an RGB. Uh, it's not called mix RGB anymore, mix color, uh, like that. And let's set this to mix. Set this as a factor, plug that into the base color. So select our two colors that we want for this. So I like it to use a nice orange. You can see we get that interesting pattern straight away. Um, but what if you want to change the frequency of this? We can do that with these modulos. And uh, another thing is also the fact that these values are a little bit, uh, you'd see we're getting a good gradient here and you might want that to be a hard line. So if you do just use a greater than, uh, after these modular nodes and set it to zero and that way you're only selecting the the first sort of modular piece you can get all sorts of interesting patterns by combining these in different ways and uh, using various operations on these so uh, yeah i'll leave you to have a play with that but uh, one thing i do like to do is use a another mix color set to multiply and um, so we've got our pattern here and I'm going to use a uh, white noise like we did before on this snapped uh, vector space here. So we'll do something like that. And let's just organize this section a bit here. So this is our displacement setup um, over there. And then this is our random color that we're going to introduce here. We're just going to multiply it on to darken things down a bit. And something like that. You control the strength of that with this factor. I'll turn the roughness up a little bit on the shader maybe play with the pattern that we've generated here as well something like that but that's pretty much it for this video i mean uh yeah you could group up this little section here and reuse it in a different uh, shader or in a different file you can just you know maybe make this material an asset and use it in your asset library to uh, apply this sort of stitched pattern to any any object or thing you have you could also go ahead and make some parameters for, for certain interesting parts of the shader like uh, this pattern repeat uh, repeating frequency and uh, maybe the scale of it is something that's really useful to have control over and um, you can make this obviously as small as you want or as big as you want and you'll have 
uh, sort of this infinite procedural resolution. It does look a little bit weird when you get too close, but I think it's uh, good enough for most things. And it's definitely better than an image texture. So uh, yeah, you can download this file from the description if you want to have a little play around with the file and um, see how I made my original setup. But otherwise, uh, thanks so much for watching and I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next video.